before I begin creating the envelope, I have one more thing I like to do that kind of preserves my sanity. One of the most important parts of building a character rig is in accounting for something called the bind pose. And the bind pose is the pose of the character and the skeleton at the point where it is bound, where the bones control the geometry. And normally when you're working with a character envelope, a skeleton painting the weights, you can easily return the character back to this bind pose by using Reset Actor. Now the only problem here is that we have a specialty spine in use and custom rig objects like this don't necessarily reset themselves very easily. So we need to make a button that's going to do that for us. And it's fairly easy to do. Uh, the way that I like to do it is to first of all let each object in the skeleton know how it's going to be animated by setting up what are called keyable attributes, keyable parameters. I'll close down the explorer here and explain a little bit more. In XSI bone objects have pretty much one function. I mean you can scale them um, but for the most part we're just rotating these objects um, because of the the FK situation or using the IK end effectors um, to, to key their positions. But when it comes to bones, the one thing we don't want to do is move the bones. So we kind of want to eliminate the ability for artists to actually keyframe the position of the bones because it can throw the skeleton off and, and can wreck the skeleton very quickly. So one of the most important things to do on bones is to make sure that you're not keying position. So I'm actually just going to use this bone filter here and just drag a box around the character or press Shift A, uh, Control A to select all of those bones using the filter. And I'm going to open up a viewing panel called the animation uh, keyable parameters editor and it works on all of the objects you've got picked even though it only looks like the pelvis bone is showing up in this drop down list here I have all of the bones showing up in my list and for all of those bones you can see that on the right side the attributes that will be keyed are position XYZ rotation and scaling and for these bones I don't need to actually keyframe their position or their scale so I want to remove those attributes from being keyed so I'll hit remove so the only attributes on the bones that will be keyed now are the rotational attributes if I press OK uh, there are other elements that could have their uh, their positions stored as well but for the most part those items are usually hidden but you can never be too sure so it's not a bad idea to take things like the roots and the effectors and store those in your action as well but in my case here I'm just going to hide them if you remember I have an explorer and if I open it up I have all of my chain effectors as a group and if I click on the group icon I can just tell all the elements in that group to be hidden just by selecting the group and, and hitting H as a toggle to hide the members of that group. I can also do the same thing with the chain roots. Now I actually have one chain root that I need in here and that's the pelvis root. That represents the top of my character. Um, I'm actually just going to remove that from the chain root group. If you select an item that's in a group and you right click on the group you can remove it from the group very easily so that when you select the group the next time it's clearly not a part. I'm also going to visually change the icon of this root here to something that I can grab a little bit easier that sits outside of the character. So for that I'm just going to press enter and I'm going to use the icon except I'm going to use what's called the shadow display icon which is very similar to the primary icon except it gives you a few more controls for sizing on various axes and offsetting the position if you need to. So I'm going to turn the standard icon, the primary one, off so there's no visual there and I'm going to turn the shadow display uh, to something that will uh, work for me like a box. I need to make the box a little bit larger so I'm going to use the main size attribute to make it big and that's pretty unwieldy, that's huge. Uh, so I'm just going to take the size attribute in Y now so this is the benefit of the shadow icon is that you can scale these, these icons down and make them a little more accessible. I have a control that looks something like that. So for the other roots, I'm simply going to hide them. And we need to account for a couple more pieces. So I'm going to make another group 
to account for some of the parts of this spine here. So this spine moves and rotates, but scaling it doesn't really do what I want it to do. It's actually throwing off some of these other objects in here. Um, so both of these objects, I'm going to set up their keyable parameters along with the pelvis root here. These three objects' jobs are to move and rotate. So if I open up that keyable parameters editor for these three objects, I'm going to allow them to be positioned and rotated, but not scaled. So I'll remove that. And these chest depth, depth objects, uh, I'm going to allow them to move and if I want them to rotate, I can. I just want the Y, to, uh, the pyramid, to remain pointing upwards. Um, so if need be, I can key the rotations on these, but I don't need to. Um, so I'll just key the position in this case. I'll just remove the other six attributes. These are going to actually act as bones for me, uh, deformers for the character. So I'm going to leave it so that their position, rotate, and scale is accounted for in the bind position just in case I, I mess up on the scale or something like that at some point down the line. But what I also need to do is account for this curve. Again, this curve is sort of driving the uh, the arc of the spine through these control objects and I don't really need to select this curve. In fact, it can cause me some grief if I do select it and manipulate it too much. So I'll make a group for this uh, curve. And this is going to be the start of a group called unselectables. And I'm going to set the selectability of that group to do not allow selecting members. So I can see it, I just can't grab it. And I'll actually move that unselectables group up into the Mulcor model. I'm done with the keyable parameters editor now so I can close it down.